Thanks, Rob. Thanks. All right, well, good evening and welcome to Whistler. So, uh, Beauty and Brains, this is what Rob said, or he actually called the uh, E-Class Coop. And we'll talk about both the beauty and the brains. <laughs> so there's more cars coming this year, five more. Five cars, more, five more cars, and next year uh, we have uh, big plans as well. But for today, um, we have the e coupe So that's coming in summer of this year. And um, we call it kind of a combination of beauty and state-of-the-art technology. So beauty and brains. So what I mean by that, let's start with the beauty. The beauty of the car, and actually that's not really true, I don't want to start with the beauty. As Mercedes, we start with history. And I think I should have, I should have started right away. Um, we have almost 50 years of a very long and rich history of uh, of coupes at Mercedes-Benz. And if some of you uh, are familiar with our classic cars, I'll take you all the way back to the, to the Stroke 8, to 1968. That's the upper left corner. That's based, the platform internally is called 114. So and then we have like six generation of E-class size coupes in the market. So today the E-coupe, which you have out there, and which you drove today, where it is the seventh generation of our E-coupe family. And uh, when I mentioned that from 1968, that's the 114. The next one is the 123 platform, 124 platform. Everybody remembers that beautiful group. Then you go into the 208, you go a uh, 207, the two, uh, sorry, the 207, the two, oh, no, the 208, the 207, the 209. This is kind of an awkward uh, sequence which we had, but that was the way it was had to be done because some of the engine nomenclature was overlapping with our car nomenclature. But anyway, the important thing for you is we have a really rich history uh, in our E-class size coupes, and it goes back almost 50 years now, back to the to the Strich 8, the Stroke 8 to 1968. So um, why are we so excited? Well, we're adding a new family member to our E-class. Almost a year ago, we launched the most intelligent car uh, on the planet, the new E-class from Mercedes-Benz. Um, you see it here in a beautiful kind of a matte uh, color here. Uh, that was a year ago. Then in early this year, in February, we added the station wagon. Um, it's a niche model, our station wagon, but there are station wagon buyers. They insist on buying a station wagon and they don't want an SUV. They want their station wagon. Most of them live upstate New York, um, but this is <laughs> so most of them too. Uh, very popular model still, but it's considered a niche model. So maybe 23,000 a year or so. so but very, uh, still very important to our family. Um, then on the red, this is the car you all had a chance to drive today. This is our E-Coupe, uh, and why I pointed out, obviously, the E-Coupe is now based as a member of the E-Class family on the E-Class platform. If you go back uh, to the slide in your, in your memory, the previous generation were based on the C-Class platform, now we're based on the E-Class platform. And with that, obviously, comes all the technology of the E-Class, but also the size of the E-Class. And I'll talk about that in a second. Uh, and what's working kind of here in a very sinister, you only see a little kind of a silhouette of that car is something um, Rob teasered on already. We'll have obviously in Cabriolet coming of our E-Coupe. That's coming in fall of this year. But we'll talk about that uh, in, a, in a couple months from now. So it's only a couple of months after our E-Coupe. All right, so let's dive in there. Uh, beauty and brain. So let's start with the beauty of the car. And we took a couple close-up <coughs> shots here, and I'll walk you around, uh, a quick walk around the car, why we think it's such a beauty. So obviously it has a very dynamic uh, and a very uh, very uh, sporty appearance from the front, and we created that by differentiation to the sedan. So the coupe has power domes integrated in the engine hood. Uh, not on the sedan, uh, that's a characteristic of our coupe. Then we have this beautiful diamond-studded uh, uh, grille, and you have this one horizontal, um, almost a, a wing running across. And then what the designers did, they picked up this wing, which gives it already, a, it kind of stretches the car up front. They picked that wing up with a double wing down here in these massive air intakes. And that kind of, you know, visually really emphasizes the width of that car and gives that car this immediate sporty character from the front and the presence from the front. Um, um, LED lights are standard on the car. We have these double torches integrated into the LED lights. <coughs> and that's obviously uh, also a uh, design um, a characteristic that you see in the night design. So when the car you know, comes up to you in, at, at night, you see immediately these two torches um, lit uh, in the LED lights. Now let's walk to the sideline. And this is a quote which uh, I want to quote our head of design, Gordon Wagner. He said, the time of decreases are over. 
and that's the execution of central purity. That is the, the new design direction of Mercedes-Benz under, under, under Gordon. Uh, what he means by that, that it's a very, uh, a very sporty um, and a very clean surface design. So if you just look at the sidelines, and maybe this picture is, is good too, or maybe you step out at the car later, you see that there's no more sharp creases running all along uh, on the sideline of the car. So it's a very, very cleaned up, very clean um, design execution. Um, and that in combination with our pillarless, uh, with our pillarless um, coupe design, so every e every E class from Mercedes obviously E coupe has no B pillar. That is tradition, and obviously is also the case for our E coupe today. And we have frameless doors, and that gives you in combination with the standard uh, with the standard um, panorama roof. If you lower all your windows on both sides, you have this massive cutout, the greenhouse, this opening with the uh, airy feeling of your panorama roof. This gives you this almost Targa-like feeling of open air driving in your coupe, which you really cannot um, uh, copy in any other car than in, in, a, in, a, in a, an E-Class coupe from Mercedes. So high belt line, very clean surfaces, standard 18-inch wheel, 19s are available. Uh, it takes you to the kind of the rear of the car. If you look at the rear of the car, this car sh features the AMG line. So you, you again see these kind of these air ducts on both sides of the car, which again visually um, stretch the car and give the car lower stance. And, and one more design feature, which uh, you'll probably notice on the car, is that we dropped the license plate really low into the rear bumper. Typically, our license plates were mounted up here, and now we dropped it really low, almost just above this rear diffuser. And that again kind of gives this car this lower appearance from the back and really visually kind of gives this car stance from the back. So um, LED lights in the front but also LED lights in the rear. I'll talk about the functionality in a second. Actually it's coming right now. So no actually not, not yet. So um, one more shot from the from the side. Uh, I, I think I walked you through all these lines uh, um, and the, the beauty of the car. What I want to stretch out uh, now is that the E-Class, being based on the platform of an, of an E-Sedan, now, is now a full-fledged four-seater. We'll talk about the, the, the dimensions uh, in, in a second. So, it's bigger in every way. Um, the entire car is almost five inches longer be exact, 4.8 inches, and almost all of this went into the wheelbase, so 4.4 inches went into the wheelbase, and that obviously gives you significantly more legroom, especially in the rear. If you look at the width of the car, the car is almost 3 inches wider, and the height of the car, it's, it's a little bit over an inch uh, higher as well. So all of this obviously adds to more uh, room inside, but also gives you more running dynamics with the long wheelbase of the car. So let's take a look on the inside of the car. So beautiful shot of our interior. Uh, I was talking about the, the, the rear leg room. Now the car is a full four-seater. And uh, if you didn't have a chance yet to sit in, in the rear seat, please do so. Try it out tomorrow. I think it's a very comfortable um, uh, leg room um, which you have there. So almost two inches more leg room compared to the, um, to the predecessor but also more shoulder room. So over 1.3 inches in the rear and almost two inches more shoulder room, more space in the front. And also because the car is slightly higher, you almost have, uh, you have over half an inch more headroom in the back of that car. So significantly more space, but not just space, it's also very flexible um, because you can fold down standard your rear seat. Um, so you have 40, 20, 40 split folding rear seat standard that gives you a lot of flexibility on in the inside and the interior of the car. So let's take in another romancing interior shot here. So um, I think it's just a beautiful shot with romance is the interior. Um, what I think the first thing you'll notice is this massive, we call it almost a like a surf panel of, of instrument clusters. Standard 12.3 inch command display and an available 12.3 inch um, instrument cluster. So uh, if you have that option, you have this massive surfboard uh, of electronic display in your car. I think another design feature which I really love, which sets the coupe apart from our sedan, are these tur turbine-inspired uh, um, air vents here. I think they just look like uh, muscles of a jet fighter, um, and that's unique to our e-coupe, um, which, which differs it from the sedan. Uh, standard leather interior on the car. We also have a um, 
has a covered and stitched dashboard, <coughs> which also differentiates the coupe from the interior. So very, not very uh, high interior uh, execution and um, features of our coupe. So let's take another look at the functionality. We're moving slightly from the beauty into the brains of the car. Um, I think you're all familiar, you probably tried it on your way up, uh, all of these kind of touch control buttons uh, on the steering wheel. There's two, one on the left side and one on the right side. They're right at your fingertips. The left side, you just swipe over them. I think you're mostly familiar from, from you know, one of your smartphones uh, uh, devices that's similar execution here. The left side controls the instrument cluster, on the right side you can control the command unit. So they're right at your fingertips and so you can keep your, you know, your eyes on the road and your hands on the wheel. Um, but also um, available on all of standard of all our e coupes is our dynamic select function. And that offers you five different settings. Uh, it's right here. Uh, I'm not sure you tried it, but make sure you try it tomorrow. We have five different settings, and that change depending on the setting you select. So you have you have sport, sport plus, you have echo, you have individual, uh, and you have comfort. So four different settings, and they all influence the throttle response, the steering response input, you know, direct or less direct. Um, and the transmission reaction. So this is all uh, com in combination to the selection you have. So make sure you toggle in between them, try to try comfort or sport or sport plus. You definitely have a totally different reaction to the throttle and to the transmission <coughs> shifting pattern, depending on the, uh, uh, the selection you are. So let's keep on. <coughs> Actually, um, that's the display, 12.3 uh, inch uh, standard on the right side. This is available on the left side. And one feature which uh, it's called the Stardust Effect, and I'll walk you outside uh, and I'll show you that in a second. Uh, see this good one in here? That's the Stardust of our LED tailor. But we have a new function which is called the Welcome function, which we can demonstrate to you at night. And that's something which just welcomes the driver to the car. Like when you open your car, the, the tail lamps actually start illuminating from the inside to the outside. And when you close your car, they actually illuminate from the outside to the inside. So it's a very nice welcoming function, which I think makes this car immediately recognizable in a parking lot for you. Nice little touch of our, uh, of our design and lighting department here. Um, if, if I mentioned earlier that the E-Coupe is based on the E-Class uh, sedan or <coughs> part of the E-Family, then obviously all of the intelligent brains of the E-Sedan is also now on our e -group. Everything is available on our e -group. And I'm going to walk you through all of them because you are familiar with them from our e -Zidan. Most of them. I'm just going to maybe point out a couple of them because I think they're, they're just, just very interesting to talk about. Obviously, you all know pre-safe. You know our uh, attention assist and blind spot monitors. You know the braking systems all of our car have, the driver assistance systems we have. Um, but maybe two which I want to uh, point out here is one, one is uh, car to X communication, and, and this is, I think, the first step where cars actually communicate with each other. And the way it works is that our E-classes can talk to each other, our E-class family cars can talk to each other. Picture this, um, a couple, two miles ahead of you, obviously you can't see it, another E-class um, has a, um, I don't know, a, a um, an, an IC spot or so, has an ESP system going on, uh, has the blinkers going on, or the hazard warning system going on. So this E-Class, um, whatever situation it was in, sends a signal up to the cloud, and this cloud now downloads it to your car and gives you a visual um, and an acoustic signal that something is coming ahead of you which you can't see yet, and you can then react in time what's going on. So on your on your nav system, you get a like, warning triangle, uh, and a warning that uh, behind the next turn or so there might be an ice patch or there might be a car parked on the side of the road. At that point it's E-class to E-class. Obviously there's a lot of technology involved in that. The next step would be then Mercedes with Mercedes and then obviously hopefully the future brings every car to every car. But uh, we're working on it. So that's one thing we're really, we're really excited on. The other one which I think just sets Mercedes apart is pre-safe sound standard in our E-classes. So what that does is probably some engineer thought, well, what else can I do? How else can I make it safe for my E-class? And probably was, couldn't sleep at night. And he came up with something which is just, uh, I think it's just amazing. It's called the Stapedius effect. And I don't know if you know that, but I didn't know it, but I learned about it. The car knows um, that if you are in a dangerous situation, there might be an, uh, an accident 
uh, happening in a, like in a split second. And typically accidents are, in, you know, come together with a lot of noise. Either the airbags explode or you have some other uh, rain noise situation and that could damage your hearing, obviously, in the car, if you are driving that car or if you're a passenger in the car. And what the car does in that moment, it, it emits a kind of a pink noise or a white noise inside the car. And that triggers the stupidious muscle in your ear, which is kind of the smallest muscles which you have. And that tenses that muscle and that protects your hearing. So short before the impact would happen or the airbag deploys, the car makes a noise inside the cabin, your ear automatically uh, tenses up and up to 40% uh, uh, protection of your ear happens with this uh, triggering of this stupidious effect. I think it's just something which, which is, um, uh, I think only Mercedes can come up with this idea. All right, let's keep uh, on moving here. Um, driver assistance systems, um, you know them all from the E sedan. We have um, all the distronic systems, the steering assistance, the blind spot systems, the lane changing systems, the speed limit uh, uh, systems. Uh, our car with the cameras can read now the speed limit signs and interact with you and tell you, know, you know, or break you down or give you warnings if you're exceeding certain speed limits. Uh, let me just point out maybe one of it which is pretty interesting. We have the active lane keeping assist. That's a feature which allows you, if you want to change the lane, I think between 50 and 130 miles an hour, uh, you have to hold down the uh, indicator for two seconds. The car then checks if it's safe and no cars and blind spots to change the lane, and then the car changes the lane for you. You don't have to do that anymore. So the car then pulls out and moves over. So that's the active lane keeping assist. Do you have to have uh, Distronic engaged for that to work, or does it work any time? Uh, it works without. Distronic needs to be on. Sorry, yes. I got a nodding in the background. Distronic needs to be on. So you're on Distronic, uh, you put the two seconds down, and then the clock checks, and then you pull over. Yeah, you need Distronic engaged. Sorry. Um, let's move on. Well, the heart of the car, obviously, is the engine. Um, this is a familiar engine. It's a V6 3 liter bi turbo. It has 329 horses. 354 pound foot of torque. Uh, we uh, made it that to a, our brand new nine speed transmission. Um, and that gives you improved acceleration times. Uh, acceleration times um, of the new E400 coupe in the two wheel drive version is 5.5 seconds. And that's over half a second faster than the predecessor. We also offer it as a chromatic, as an all wheel drive version. And that obviously gives you even better acceleration times. So we have a 5.2 second acceleration time with our all-wheel drive system that's over a second faster than the predecessor. So um, very powerful engine, our E400, um, available in our, in our coupe version. Um, let's talk about, uh, you mentioned it earlier, somebody asked a question, Paul, you did, about the suspension. Standard in the car is a steel, it's a steel spring suspension, but it comes with selective damping. So that allows you already a very agile driving because the dampers automatically kind of adjust the damping between uh, the actuation of the damper. So it's either very comfortable or you're very sporty, so it stiffens up when it needs to be sportier. That comes standard with steel springs. But optional is our air body control. Uh, and you have, if you custom elect for our airmatic or air body control system, you have a three damper system in the rear and rear axle, a two damping system in the front axle. And then you have three settings which you can select. You have, you have Comfort, Sport, and Sport Plus, and that obviously regulates the stiffness of your damping system. Uh, another couple features or pluses of our air body control is with air body control, the car always has the same level, obviously, because uh, it's independent from the load. So if you have four people in the car, or one if you have luggage or no, the air suspension always keeps the car at the same level. You also can raise the car with Airmatic in case you need to go over a garage entry or you have an entry angle to your garage or actually you're you know, driving on, on snowy conditions with your automatic car, you can raise the car and it automatically lowers the car again should you pick up speed and you forget to, to manually lower the car, so it automatically drops it down again to give you just the and fuel efficiency. <coughs> so, um, standard equipment is, is very generous in our e-coupe. Um, let me just walk around quickly. I think I started here already mentioned that a couple of times. We have this, this huge display standard on our car. Leather is standard. The panorama roof comes standard on our coupe. LED uh, lights and tail lamps are standard on the car. Obviously, we have the dashboard. I, I showed you this picture here. 
view for camera, view for camera is standard. Uh, another feature, um, you can change the interior lighting with 64 different colors. Not, not just six, 64 different colors. So I think we have a color for every taste here, uh, which comes standard on every car. Pre-safe sound, I mentioned that one. Uh, command is standard in our car. And that's maybe something else which I want to point out. Our Embrace system is also standard for five years for free. It's included. And here you can remotely unlock, lock the car. You can remote start the car. Um, the features which come with our Embrace system. So high level of standard equipment. So let's talk about the price of the car. Uh, we priced our E400 Coupe at an MSRP of 58.9. The formatic is uh, 61.4, so 2,500 bucks more. It's available in summer of this year. Everybody asked the question, yes, we have destination and delivery charge. Uh, so we showed you the MSRPs, uh, that's 995, depending on how you uh, publish any numbers. <coughs> That will be in addition to that. So two models uh, start in the summer, E400 and E400 Formatic. Uh, let's talk a little bit what's coming soon. This is this beautiful cabriolet. Uh, in a couple months from now, same engine, same drivetrains, E400. And for the first time, Mercedes has now a E cabriolet as an all-wheel drive version. So it's truly not just a four-seater, but a four-season car. Uh, you have all-wheel drive standard. Uh, it's a couple months behind our coupe. Um, and we'll talk about pricing, you know, when we're really, when we get closer to the launch of that car. So, uh, we have a little video here. The car opens uh, in roughly 20 seconds. And you can actually be in motion while you open the roof up to, Dana, correct me, 30 miles an hour. Mm -hmm. 30 miles an hour, you can open your roof uh, when you pull out of the garage uh, and into the driveway. And, um, yeah, it's coming this fall. But while we're talking about retractable roofs, we inserted one more picture. It's something we're really proud of. Everybody knows we moved to Atlanta. So we are there for almost two years now. And we have this great sponsorship with the new, brand new Falcon <coughs> Stadium. It's the Mercedes-Benz Stadium. Um, and that is, I think it's the biggest retractable roof in the world. Uh, that roof opens up, not in 20 seconds, probably more well, like 20 minutes. But it opens up as well. Uh, and I think this star is um, probably the biggest star. And uh, should you ever get to outer space, you probably uh, see that, that star as well on our roof. So we're very happy to be uh, the proud sponsor of this Mercedes-Benz Stadium in Atlanta.